freezer mm -hmm. and it was just you know delhi's not very much not very big so she said just walk down and like he's expecting you and yep i said all right perfect like yeah this is the start of another journey and like amber was pretty excited for me as well like, yeah i was gonna be a hockey coach so i went and met the guy He's super knowledgeable in hockey. He's the president of minor hockey. He was the president of the Legion. He was the fire chief, citizen of the year. Yeah. S sounded like a stand-up stand, stand -up guy, right? Sure. Like, and he was nice enough to me. He was personable to me. And uh, he said, do you want to come to a practice uh, that afternoon? And so I, in my head, like, I've been around the game long enough, but I thought, like, this is moving pretty quick. Mm -hmm. like, this is moving fast. Like, I just met you, and you want me to strap on my skates this afternoon. Yeah. So I did, and I went out with this team and, and their tryout, and it wasn't, like, the caliber hockey that I thought I was going to be coaching. Like, it was still pretty good hockey. Like, mm -hmm. they were just older guys, but it was, like, I was used to pretty competitive hockey. and Right. And it was, like, a B center, and I was used to kind of, like, triple-A hockey. But I thought, you know, like, I get to teach these guys something. Like, it'll be fun sure. enough. And there's the uh, another coach there that he was just a parent, and he just wanted to learn about this stuff. So I thought maybe I could teach this guy a little bit of stuff. And, mm hmm it was cool. So he, this, this president of minor hockey was at the practice and he said, Oh, I'm going to slide by your house on Tuesday night and grab your coach's certificates. Cause I just don't keep them with me. Like I don't keep them in my wallet. There's sure. Not really any point in that. I could just keep them at home. Yep. File them away. Keep them safe. Keep them safe. So he called me on the Tuesday night. I just got home from the shop and he said, I'm coming over. And Amber was, Amber had to go to Sarnia for something to do with school. I can't even remember what it was. So she was gone. And uh, he came over and picked me up. Oh, excuse me. And uh, oh, this this is like, and I'll talk about this, but it's like I know I'm getting into the shit, right? Yeah, like, I know. I know that I I'm know. getting into the stuff, and like I'm not ashamed to talk about this stuff. It's just super hard. And, I, like, I know, buddy, and I appreciate yeah. that. And it's because you you kind of relive it in a little yeah, bit, right? a little bit, a so, little I'm, bit, yeah. And I've worked through it, right? I really yeah. have worked through this stuff, and I'm comfortable telling you this. I'm not even afraid to get vulnerable. Sure. Do you, do you know what yeah. I mean? I hope not. It just like it still hits me. Do I you know. know what I mean? I know. So. Take your time, buddy. Yeah. yeah, there's there's no rush here. It's, it's all good. Take a sip of your rock star. Yeah. But it's a really powerful story. And uh, I like I mean, I wasn't really even fully aware of it until we talked mm -hmm. earlier before doing this podcast. Yeah. So um, I realize how hard this is for you. Yeah. Originally, I thought we were just going to be talking sort of more mental health and alcohol and drugs yeah. and things like that and, and addiction. But I didn't yeah. realize there was sort of a, a monumental event that took yeah. place that kind of led to a lot of it. Yeah. And that's what it was. Like, I drank. And I always tell people, like, I'm from the East Coast, like, born in Halifax, and I'm Irish. Like, that, I'm pretty well screwed off the top, right, for alcohol. <laughs> like, I'm destined to be an alcoholic. If you like, fit into those stereotypes, I'm I just, suppose. I'm just screwed, right? And yeah. I kind of embraced that. But I didn't really drink that heavy in high school. Like, I drank like an Irish teenager, right? Mm -hmm. Like, that's just the way I drank, and it went to some pretty epic, uh, like, points that I didn't know was possible, like, after this this happened so i was in delhi he came pick me up um he said let's go to a to simcoe to watch a hockey practice and i thought that was pretty normal that like just go see how the organization works see another team like see how their systems work and that's kind of how like each organization has different systems how they like to train their teams all the way up and yeah so everyone knows all that so i i knew that that kind of would would be happening so we got to this rink and there was no one there really and i was like Hmm, like never thinking sexual abuse, but right. I was like, that's weird that like no one's at the rink. So yeah. he fumbled with his phone and like, I don't even know if he called someone, but he was like, oh, I must have the nights mixed up and shit like that. And I was like, whatever. Like I, you know, it's getting on like eight o'clock at night. I got to work in the morning. Like, let's just head back to Delhi. And right. I got to go home and go to sleep and Amber's going to be late. And I just, you know, I just want to get home and do my thing. Right. I just wanted to give you my certificate. So we went back to. Delhi and he pulled in this like one of the ethnic halls there it's like the Belgian club or the one of the I don't know Canadian club or something like that there mm -hmm. he said well let's just go in and have a beer and I was like dude like it's a Tuesday night I gotta work in the morning like I'm really not into it but right. I you know you want to keep talking hockey cool you seem like a nice enough guy sure so I went and I probably had like two or three beers and that was it like over an hour and I was like I gotta get going like, yeah you know like, here's my certificates photocopy and bring him back to me i don't care i gotta get going yeah and he kind of like just pressured me to stay there and i was like what's with this guy like, right like dude i 
I got my own shit going on, right? Like, Did you think maybe he just needed some friends at like that time? I thought he was lonely. Yeah, right. Fair like, enough. Maybe his wife hated him. Yeah, like, and he just wanted to hang out. There was not really anyone in the bar. Yeah, like it was just kind of us two talking about. And at this point, we weren't even talking about hockey. We were talking about like life stuff, about like like where I grew up and about my family. And it wasn't even about hockey stuff. So that was like I look back now and I think that's a huge red flag, right? Right. And right. I didn't know that then. Like I just no, had no who, idea. how would you? Right. I mean, never. It, they don't teach that. Stuff. No, no, never at all. Right. So I did that, and I finally was like, by like ten thirty, was like, I'm just gonna walk home. Like it's not very far at all. I'm not drunk. Like, I've had three beers. I know exactly where I'm going, where my keys are, where, what apartment I'm in. Like, I've had three beers and drove in before. Like, I, I'm okay to walk home. He's like, no, 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 I'll, I'll drive you. So he, he said, I'm leaving. I'll pay for the beers. He paid for the beers. He, we got in the truck, in his truck, and he drove me home. Yeah. And, um, and uh, so I got out of his truck, and I had to walk up a set of stairs to my apartment. Yeah. And uh, by the time I got to the top of the stairs, uh, he was right behind me and he locked me in my apartment and he raped me for 45 minutes. Really? So he followed you right in the building? Yeah. He like turned around and locked the door. And that's when like... And you lived with Amber, right? Yeah. But she wasn't there and he knew she wasn't there? Yeah, he knew it. Because she had said something on the Sunday when we were at the hockey practice. Yeah. That she had to go away on Tuesday night and he picked up on that. that Really? Yeah. Wow. So it changed everything. I, you know, I being raped, I like changed my morals, changed my values, changed mm-hmm. like who I was. Like it was, it was the most bizarre, scary, frightening, like overwhelming feeling I've ever had in, yeah. in my life. Right. So what did you, like, what were your next steps? I mean, A, I'm, I'm so sorry that happened to you. Yeah, I mean, I that's, that. that shouldn't happen to yeah. anyone ever. What were the next steps that you, you kind of took in, in this fucked up situation? Yeah. So I, so I sat there on my couch naked Yeah. and I, you know, I'll always remember him saying, if you tell anyone, I'll kill you. Really? And like, and and then I, like, I'll remember him saying like that he was going to come back the next week and do, do it again. And I thought in my head, like not a fucking chance, pal. Right. Like no way you're doing this. So I probably sat there for 45 minutes on my couch naked contemplating what I do. Like, do I call the police? Did this really just happen? Sure. You're in shock. Like Um, no way. Is this, yeah. is this for real? And so I got the balls to dial 911 and like that took everything out of me to dial three numbers. No kidding. Police came. I gave my, I went to the police station, like was basically treated like a criminal there. Like it was, I was interviewed in the same room as he was interviewed in the next day. Really? Like it was just, it wasn't, a, the cops really didn't believe me. I was a 21 year old guy, right? Like, yeah. The cops aren't going to believe that. And, so the police arrested him the next day, and he admitted that he did it. And then, uh, really, yeah, like, he admitted it. Yeah, right away. Which I was like, "Holy shit! Like this is real." Yeah, this is real. And then it hit the press. It was all over the press for like three months before other people came out and uh, some other guys came out. And so he did, this wasn't the first time he'd no, done this. No, but I was kind of the whistleblower on it. I kind of put a stop to it for now. Yeah, and, you know, and some other guys came out in support and. So I went through that process, the court process for a full year of like going, being remanded and going, being remanded. And finally he sat in front of a judge that he'd plead, let he plead guilty. And wow. That was, uh, that's fucked up, man. It was terrible. Holy shit. It was terrible. So like, what do you think? I mean, were you expecting him to admit that? Never, never. That's, that's yeah. Like I, I that's just in. I, it's a good thing that it happened. Yeah. Like, you, it probably would have been even worse for you if he didn't. He have you didn't. ever thought about yeah. if he tried to fight you yeah. on that? Like, and that's what I thought when I was going to the police. Like, like when he went to the police, go talk to him. He He's not even going to say that he was with me. Right. Like he could make up some bullshit story. Whatever. He's the he's the president of this and that. Like, no one's going to believe this unknown 21-year-old who just moved to Delhi. Right. Over the citizen of the year. No kidding. Like that's, and that's what I was thinking about. But I... And I regretted calling the police like pretty well instantly. Yeah. I, I regretted it. And that, that was tough. Like I, so at the police station, Amber, I called Amber and I said like, can you come pick me up from Simcoe police station? She freaked. Sure. Like she, Cause she didn't know what was going on. And I right. just told her to pick me up at a police station. Like, yeah. And I didn't tell her anything else. So she freaked and then got there. And our ride from Simcoe Police Station to Delhi, like, she, we didn't speak. Really? We just didn't know what to say to each other. And that was the most silent, awkward. But she knew what had happened to you at that point? You yeah, explained it? Yeah, well, I explained it, and she wasn't very, 
she didn't know how to take it. Well, she didn't believe me. Like she didn't believe that it happened, which really sucked because I, you know, I thought I trusted this girl. Right. Like everything about this girl was like for me. (laughs) You moved to Delhi for it. Yeah. Like I moved to this shitty little tobacco (laughs) town for you, you know, and now you're not going to believe me. Yeah. So that was, and that was pretty tough. Like she was adamant about that until he pled guilty. Like a year later, she was very adamant about not believing me. And even though he had admitted it to the cops though. Yeah. She would, she would always say like you got to go to the police station and like tell them that this didn't happen. Like, really? Like, At 21, why would I make this up? No kidding. Like, this is the last thing that I would want to make up. Like, Absolutely. At 20 at any age, do you know what I mean? I yeah. think this is the last thing. So that sucked and I I mean I lost all my trust for her yeah. in that and No kidding. I started self-harming the day after I So what do you mean by self-harming? I burned myself. You just like uh, you, yeah. did you feel like somehow this was brought on or yeah, how, yeah you, I, well yeah. I thought that I invited it somehow like maybe gave this guy you know body language that I wanted it or I, I invited it or right. I thought you know maybe he thought I was gay yeah or like I never thought that it was a power and control thing sure never never until like I got into therapy but I I questioned a lot of things after it happened like I burnt myself. Because I felt like I had this layer of like shit all over me. Yeah, just like, just like you needed, you couldn't get off in the shower. Yeah. And, and that's no, that's how that. I burnt myself. Like was in the shower. I would never put. I would put all the hot water on, and like no cold. And I had a pretty like high pressure shower. And so I burned my legs, my stomach, really, and like my privates and like everywhere because I felt that fucking disgusting. Like I just felt so gross. Yeah, no, I didn't, I, want, didn't I want to be you. around anyone. Like started boozing quite a bit. So before this whole incident, you, you didn't have a problem with drugs or alcohol, no, correct? No, not really. Like no? I'd, I'd experimented with pot and I drank, but nothing major. Right. It was I, just it you were just a young guy just having a young fun. Guy having fun, yeah. Like if I went to a field party, for sure I'm going to bring some beers. But if I'm sitting at home, I'm not going to be not, s- yeah. smoking dope out back. You sure. Know what I mean, like and you're not sitting there my... drinking by yourself. Or no, anything. like okay. that was never the thing. I think. You know, I drank like six tall boys back then and I'd have like a good time, right? Yeah. Like after that I would drink six tall boys for breakfast. Right. That's yeah. how I woke up and that's how I could function or that's how I thought I could function. So it seems like this played such an effect that you needed to numb yourself yeah. to get through the days. Yeah. Because I didn't know how and I didn't know how to tell anyone. I didn't know how to tell my supporter, my buddies, like Amber didn't believe me. How am I gonna tell anyone else? Yeah, right? that must have been hard. So I you know, I hit it hard, I like got into booze and every day and then i found cocaine and then yeah. i found crystal meth and then i you know went all the way to heroin and yeah so did messy. this did this like so this happened when we were 21 so so tell me about sort of um how you kind of spiraled into um becoming um an addict i guess yeah. for lack it, of better terms right yeah. it was quick it, it was, was quick it was very quick like okay pretty rapid i would say within by the time he pled guilty which was uh Eleven and a half months later, I was pretty well full fledged into crystal meth. Really, like a full fledged crystal meth addict. Like my, I remember at his, because the day he was sentenced to basically nothing it was the first day that I ever had a suicide attempt. And sorry, when when did you have the suicide attempt? And it was uh, July seventh, two thousand seven. You remember the date? Yeah, really. Oh seven, oh seven, oh seven. Wow. Yeah, it was so bizarre. And this, how did you? If you don't mind me asking, how did you attempt to end your life? So he pled, like he pled guilty, and the yeah. judge gave him three months house arrest, and I is, got to watch him leave the courthouse, and that crippled me. Like, sure, I, that was the, that was it for you. That was it. I was like, this guy gets to get in his pickup truck and go home to his wife. After and, all the shit that you've been and through, I, and I have to leave the courthouse, and now what? Right? Yeah. Like, and now what? So I broke into my friend's house. I went back home, and I had a buddy who was a hunter, and he was a mechanic, like he was an auto mechanic. So I knew that he wouldn't be home; he'd be working all day. Yeah. And so I broke into his house and loaded up his 12 gauge and uh, wow, sat on his couch and he'd heard what happened on the radio and we were pretty good friends. So he got off work and said like, I got to go be with my buddy. Yeah. So he came home to get changed and I was sitting on his couch with the, 12- with the shotgun in your mouth. Yeah. Holy and he lost fuck. his mind. Like he just, he yeah. lost his mind. Well, that's traumatizing for him. Yeah. Too, right? <laughs> I didn't yeah. think, I was like, fuck it. You're going to have to clean this mess up. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, I you're not care. thinking at that time. No, I get it. Yeah. Like, I just didn't care at all. Yeah. So we drank for that, and he's like, we're going to the hospital. And I was like, no, we're not. And we drank all that afternoon, and I don't condone that at all, but I think like that probably saved my life, drinking all afternoon and not going to the hospital. Really? Like I was with someone that... 
So he he sat there and he after that and tried to drink with you and yeah, be buddy buddy. Just be my buddy. Just to get through it. Yeah. Okay. I mean that's it in was, that situation, it's not yeah. like any of us know what to do in that right, situation yeah. unless you're trained for yeah. it. Yeah, right? and but, I think that's like he's not a mechanic. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like he knows yeah. how to rent. He doesn't know how to deal with someone. He just wants to keep you alive. Yeah, and that's like we're I'm still friends with him till this day. Right. Sure. He, he lives back home now, so I don't see him as.